One of my good viewers, Canevium, asked me a question. What is your vision for necromancy in fantasy worlds? How would you see it starting from the very beginning and ending with the highest degree of power? It's a good question, and a good question demands a good answer. So I've had to contemplate it a bit, but luckily I didn't have to contemplate it for too long because I've been imagining stuff like this for a long time. Whenever I was bored at school or whatever, I'd find my mind wandering off to such topics. We'll start with a bit of theory about necromancy and how it might work, and then we'll move on to how the necromancy apprentice would slowly become a true necromancer and what that would be like. So I've always figured that in a world where magic exists, magic would be somewhat integral to the world and it could probably be studied like a kind of science. It would be part of the world, just like the laws of physics are in our world. People could study it, demonstrate it, stuff like that. But it would probably be poorly understood by most people, just like science is poorly understood by most people in the real world. Early people would probably observe this phenomenon taking place in nature, and they'd probably be afraid of it. They'd see, you know, their, their friends and relatives rising up f from the grave in certain in certain circumstances and they'd probably find that pretty unsettling. Because people wouldn't understand why it was happening, these undead would likely be uncontrollable. They'd be considered dangerous aberrations and they'd be destroyed immediately. People would probably devise ways to prevent this from happening, like burying the dead with certain ingredients, or burning them, like cremating them, or doing other things that might prevent the dead from rising. I'd expect that in a world with real necromancy, the remains of people would be handled with even more care than our real world, and places like cemeteries, which would be perfect for necromancers to exploit, probably wouldn't exist. But humans are curious, and there'd be people that would be taking an interest in this naturally occurring necromancy and trying to understand it. Ancient humans in our real world saw the ancestors of wolves hunting in nature and being pretty useful. They decided that they would tame these ancestors of wolves, and this produced our domestic dogs. And I think that there'd be people in society that would take a similar interest in these undead, and they'd begin to study them, learn about them, and um, they'd become the first necromancers. They'd be the ones that started to figure out how it worked. They'd learn why the undead are raising, under what circumstances they raise, and ultimately how to control them. Now who knows the actual mechanics behind necromancy? That could be explained in any number of ways. The problem is, the more realistic you try to be about it, the harder it gets to justify, and the more restricted your options for undead become. For example, I was once pondering about how realistic necromancy might occur. And one semi-realistic idea I had would be that a special fungus would grow on corpses, it would coat the corpse, and it would consume the flesh, and it would grow, and then it would eventually become capable of moving itself using the bone structure left behind. The tricky part is figuring out how the necromats would gain control over this fungus creature. One idea is maybe the fungi creatures work like a sort of beehive with a queen, and the necromancer slays or enslaves this queen fungi zombie and takes her place and that way becomes the master of the fungi undead lair. But honestly, it's a lot easier to just forget about justifying it and just say that it works. Because there's no realistic way to explain things like ghosts, skeletons that just walk around. The only thing you can really explain is maybe like constructs, like flesh atronarchs, things of that nature, and of course zombies. So I'd say forget about trying to make it semi-realistic. It's a lot easier to just say that it works. In different cultures and societies all around this world, necromancy would be treated differently. Some would embrace it and use it, others would hate it. The societies that embraced it would likely develop different ways of doing it, and the undead you'd see from nation to nation would probably be prepared differently and have different attributes. But one thing I'm very certain about is that undead would not spawn out of thin air by casting a spell. In my opinion, that's just not cool at all. 
Instead, the undead must be crafted using a ritual and special ingredients. Basic undead that formed in the wild on their own would spawn in by chance. Maybe they died in a region where the ingredients required are already plentiful, such as in a swamp with special mud and fungus and plants and whatever else. All the weird ingredients that would be required. The dead could sink deep into this mud and be activated by the chemical contents of that mud and arise to wander and terrorize. This could explain why some regions of the world are known to be haunted. Common people might assume that a forest or swamp is cursed because people and animals that die there often come back from the dead. But a learned necromancer would know that they are coming back because of the special properties of that environment and not because of a curse or whatever else. Undead that are created artificially could be quite different though. An undead that's been crafted and built in a controlled environment could have been created using specific ingredients that would have been chosen for the special effects that these ingredients provide. This would create a superior minion. A corpse would be coated in the bog mud of the zombie bog, but liberally dashed with the sands of the desert death, and then a handful of toxic mold spores could be poured down its throat to grow in the dead carcass. This would result in a superior zombie. The strange mud would activate the corpse over time, the sand would strengthen it, and the toxic spores would make it constantly emit noxious gases and poison anyone who gets too close. Now this is all just, you know, me making stuff up off the top of my head. You could certainly find cooler ingredients than the zombie bog mud or the sands from the desert of death, but I hope you get the picture. An interesting thought to consider is that before the necromancer is able to become undead himself, like before he attains lichdom or whatever else, he's going to be a living creature. And that means he's going to be susceptible to things like disease and also to the awful horrendous smell of, of working on these corpses. So I was thinking about ways that these necromancers might be able to get around these problems before they become undead themselves. And I'd say that probably it could be factored into their uniform a bit and it could be made a little bit spooky. Now you know, back in the times of the Black Death, those, um, what, what do you call them? Those, um, doctors or whatever, plague doctors, they wore that sort of mask that had the long nose on it. And I believe what they did is they put special herbs and things that smelt good down into that nose of, of the mask. And that way they would be constantly breathing uh, pleasant smelling herbs and whatever. And they believed that this would keep them safe from the plague, which of course it wouldn't have. But it did mean that they constantly breathed fresh and nice smelling air. The necromancers could do something similar with their outfits and it would make them look quite cool and it could give them an intimidating appearance as well. Along with that, they'd probably wear some pretty good gloves so that if they cut themselves while they're cutting these corpses, they aren't going to become infected and die. But how could the necromancer control the undead that they've created? It's a difficult question, almost impossible if you're trying to be realistic about it. Luckily, we're not being realistic here. One possibility is that the undead are puppets and they're directly controlled by a necromancer, somewhere else via a magic link but these minions are mostly incapable of doing anything on their own. Think of a minion a bit like a car. Without a driver to drive it, it just sits there stupidly doing nothing. Maybe a minion would retain some basic initiative, like if it sees an enemy it could chase it and attack it on its own, or if it's given the task, it might be capable of repeating that task over and over until it can't do it anymore, at which point it would return to doing nothing. If this is how minions would work in this world, it's interesting to imagine the necromancer society that would develop around it. They'd have minions to do all the hard work for them, the fighting, the hunting, the building, farming, etc. But because the minions can't act on their own, they would require necromancers to be somewhere, probably in a meditative trance and hidden deep inside a safe fortress, controlling them using their forts. 
it'd be kind of like someone playing a real-time strategy game. They'd be controlling, you know, the worker minions, setting them on their task to get resources, chop wood, whatever. And then there'd be other minions that would be on patrol. The necromancer would be responsible for occasionally checking in on what those minions can see or checking on the state of the minions. Obviously, if the minions have retained a little bit of um, initiative of their own, they'll be able to chase an enemy if they see one. And the necromancer might be alerted to this. A necromancer could probably only mentally command so many minions at once. So there'd be several different necromancers assigned to controlling different minions. One might manage resources, the other might manage patrol, and yet another might be, you know, exploring or scouting or something like that. When one got tired, another necromancer would probably have to take over from them so that the former necromancer could have a break. But maybe necromancers would like to delegate a bit. They probably wouldn't want to be constantly focusing on controlling these minions if they could help it. So what if some minions were allowed to be leaders and commanders of a smaller group of minions? That would require that the minion wasn't mindless and retained some kind of intelligence or sentience. How would this be achieved, I wonder? Well, one answer I had would be to imprison a soul within a minion, then force it to comply. Imagine if a necromancer sucked out your soul and trapped it inside an object like a talisman or a stone and then embedded that inside an undead minion. You would awake, not in control of your own body, but in control of an undead body. You would want to run and hide, but then you would feel an awful pain, compelling you to stand still and comply so that the pain would stop. Then you would see before you stand as a necromancer, who introduces you to a new job. You are now the commander of the minor skeletons. Go and supervise these minions and make sure that they're mining effectively. If you comply, you will be rewarded. If you don't comply, you will be punished. If you disobey multiple times, you will be destroyed. Perhaps if a slave like this did well at his job, they'd be promoted into being a real necromancer. Who knows? Or maybe willing necromancer apprentices and acolytes would perform such roles instead. There's quite a few possibilities you could take with such an idea. And not all of these possibilities have to be evil either. Necromancers could be honorable members of good societies tasked with creating undead minions to do all the jobs that normal people don't want to do. Another interesting point here that could be made is the kinds of minions that are used by necromancer societies for different kinds of jobs. Obviously you wouldn't want zombies to be performing tasks like farming or agriculture or being shopkeepers or whatever else. That would be incredibly unhygienic. I think for such tasks it would be much better to use skeletons. It could be that necromancers would choose skeletons over zombies in almost every situation, except where they either want to inflict disease upon the enemy, or in situations where they're just in a hurry and they don't have time to strip all the flesh off. Another thing to consider is that a zombie has to be kind of fresh in comparison to a skeleton that's been rotting under the ground for ages. Those bones are going to be brittle, whereas bones from a zombie or a freshly dead person are going to be quite strong indeed. So a necromancer might choose a zombie for tasks where strength is required as well. A zombie is going to have more mass, he's going to be able to take punishment better than a skeleton would. The zombie is also going to stink to the high heavens and would make a terrible minion for use indoors as like a guard or anything like that. You probably wouldn't want him guarding a city square. You wouldn't want him doing any kind of task in an enclosed space. And they'd probably be leaving their muck and stink on everything. So I can see for a lot of situations that aren't battlefield situations, you won't be wanting to have zombies doing tasks like that. Another good non-stinky candidate would be something like a mummy. A mummy is of course preserved and might not smell like roses. They could also put some lavender oil onto the mummy and just make him smell a bit better that way as well. So you'd have to give some thought to your world about how the necromancers are going to use their different minions in ways that would make some kind of sense. Another thing to think about is there's certain universes in fantasy that allow necromancers to provide life 
to more things than just dead animals and dead people. For example, the necromancer in Diablo 2 is able to create various golems. He can create life within clay and create a clay golem. He can give life to iron or steel or whatever else and create a golem from metal. He can also create life from himself with the blood golem. And there's of course the fire golem. In the roguelike add-on, Ancient Domains of Mystery, there's a thing called the White Necromancer. And the White Necromancer takes clay and creates minions from it. Little homunculi and other kinds of golems. I think this is all valid really, because at the end of the day, the Necromancer is using bones and dead and stuff because it's kind of a plentiful resource. It might be conceivable that they can give life to other kinds of things, but this might start moving in the direction of Enchanter or Golem Crafter or whatever else, and you might not want to add this to your necromancy. It's just something to think about. So there's my initial thoughts on necromancy. I've still got a lot to say about it, and I'm going to have to create a follow-up video on this that will cover the progression from Necromancer Apprentice to the ultimate goal of most necromancers, which is lich them. I'd like to sort of talk about the path that a necromancer would have to take from his very beginning as a necromancer apprentice until the final point where he becomes a lich using a phylactery and doing all that good stuff. This video was basically made to help Gnevium create his magnum opus, which is probably going to be some kind of great necromancy story. At least that's what I'm hoping. I hope I've been able to help him get some ideas on how he can design the necromancy in his world. I also really hope to one day be able to read the fiction that he produces. If you've got good ideas about how necromancy should work, then please leave a comment below. I'd be interested to read it, and I'm sure he would be too. You can also join the Discord and talk about it there if you want.